100% procedural tree bark. It might sound complicated, but if you look at this graph, it's not even that big. You can, without too much trouble, produce something that is very, very useful and actually looks pretty good, in my opinion. So let's get into making this. So we're going to start by adding a Voronoi texture here and pressing Ctrl and T for texture coordinate mapping. We're going to use the object texture coordinate data and if we preview that we can see this cell like structure but that's not really what we're looking for so what we'll do is in the mapping scale section we can decrease the z scale to stretch this out somewhere around 1.6 1.7 should be pretty good this is starting to give us the beginnings of our tree bark texture but we have one pretty major problem here and that it's a little bit too regular still so we're going to have to distort this doing that is pretty easy dragging off the object texture coordinates we can add in a noise texture and also dragging off that same object coordinate pin we can add a mix color going into color one and then the color from the noise texture is going to go into color number two that will be our new vector output there's a couple of different ways you can uh, mess around with this I recommend the blending mode for linear light. That seems to work the best for this particular material. And then we just need a little bit of distortion. This is no distortion at all, but if we add a little bit more distortion, you can see things starting to look a lot more natural. This entire setup is going to first and foremost drive a color ramp for the actual color of the wood. We actually want the dark parts here, which are going to be the parts that are sticking out in this texture to be a little bit lighter. So we'll go for a lighter brown texture or color rather. And then uh, the white bits are going to be a slightly darker brown. As you can see, things are starting to very slowly look a little bit more like tree bark. Now let's copy over this color ramp and uh, add a noise texture under it because we're going to also make the moss. Preview that to see what we're doing. Uh, the scale is going to have to be significantly higher. And obviously we're going to change the color to a more greenish yellow color for this one. And then a lighter, more green colored uh, U for this one. Maybe add in a little bit more detail as well. And a slight bit of distortion. Now we mix these colors together with a mix color node. The factor is going to come from a noise texture gone through a color ramp to control the contrast and now we can start previewing this. So this is not quite what we're looking for. So what we can do is we can start playing around with the black and white points here to make the moss spots that we like. And of course we can also mess around with the scale to see how big the actual spots of moss are going to be. And finally, that is going to be the base color for our material. Now, I also like to use the distance output from this Voronoi texture into a color ramp because everything we do goes through a color ramp. Just assume that most things go through a color ramp and you'll be fine. Uh, we're going to actually use that for the roughness. So this way you can see there is a little bit of difference between how reflective certain parts of the bark are. That really helps selling the effect of detail. But this is a little bit too much because we don't really want anything to have zero roughness. So we're going to put this at about 30 to 40% and then increase this by quite a bit and then decrease this by a decent amount as well. Now, the only thing we need to add are normals and displacements, and then we're done. You might think we're not quite there yet, but a lot of the details comes in with normals and displacement. So dragging of our main Voronoi texture again, we're going to get add, and we can just get a math node for that. And we'll also get a noise texture. We'll preview the noise texture real quick and make sure that it's nice and small in detail. We can also increase the actual detail of the texture by a little bit, not too much. The roughness itself can go... Mm, it's actually pretty good at 0.5, I'd say. And we can add these two together. We get this, which is going to uh, go into a bump node for the height. 
and that's going to be our normal map. So if we look at our texture now, and then you probably want to decrease the strength by a little bit. And using that same output, we can actually put that into the height input of a displacement node, which is going to go into the material output for displacement. If we go over to render engine and set it to cycles, and then uh, the feature set is going to be experimental, we can go over to our modifiers, add a subdivision surface, keep it simple, and set it to adaptive subdivision. So after playing around a little bit more with the colors, I got a slightly uh, better result. Lighter colors really uh, do tend to make this look a little bit better. Anyway, fine tune to your heart's content until you have something you're happy with. There's a million different options. As you can see, we got a very different result in the end uh, compared to the first one that I showed at the beginning of the video. And that's because every single parameter changing can be so important. So figure out what best works for you and then you'll have a perfect material to work with for your trees.